Hey there, Nikki Tricos here of Life I Design. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have been designing and creating watercolor brushes that I personally use and love in the studio, and I've just come out with a brand new set. They're very different from the first set that I have offered. These are the first set, the rounds. They are snappy and are great for detail. This new set that I have just come out with has some really cool brushes that will help you with your loose watercolor painting game. I have included a really nice fat mop brush that is so thirsty, it will create washes and glide across your page um, so beautifully. And if you're painting florals, use it for florals to create really loose, abstracty, open florals. Um, for landscapes, if you're wanting to put large sky washes down, your mop brush will be the one to use. The next brush is the filbert brush. Again, if you're painting loose florals, the filbert will create beautiful petals regardless of the way that you hold it, and I'll demonstrate them in just a moment. Next up, we have our dagger brush. And with this dagger brush, if you hold it at the top end and really just let the brush do its thing, you'll create some gorgeous leaves, um, some beautiful strokes if you're working maybe on some abstracts. And again, it holds tons of water, so you're not gonna have to reload every three seconds. <laughs> okay, and last up is the rigor brush. Now the rigor brush is really great for holding a ton of water. Again, they are synthetic squirrel hair um, and they have a little bit of a crimp to them. So they hold a ton of water so you don't have to reload all the time. So if you're using a detail brush, maybe to add the final details to your paintings, the rigor brush might be your new favorite brush, okay? So I'm going to demonstrate them to you um, in just a minute while I flip the camera. If you didn't get a set, don't worry. Just um, make sure you subscribe to emails because we always release things like that to our email list first, and then you'll be the first ones to be able to order a set. Um, if, if you do want a set and we have quite a few people who do, then I'll go ahead and I'll put in another order with our manufacturer, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera and demonstrate this new brush set for you. So here are the new brushes. Thank you if you've ordered them. I'm really excited for you to play around with them. They are very different from the original set. So this set of brushes, which I use in studio all the time, you can see here's where I lay them. And this is just, I think it's an olive tray from um, the home decor section in a store. So get creative with how you store your brushes. I like to store them flat so that they dry um, and the ferrule doesn't get filled with water. I wanna maintain them as long as possible and make sure they're well taken care of. This guy will straighten out with a little bit of water, so I'm not too concerned. Um, but I use them all the time in studio. So I want you to enjoy the brushes as much as I do. I've designed them um, to make sure that they are good quality, good experience. You'll have them for a long time and you'll enjoy painting with them. So again, the first set of brushes is for more of your fine detail, more control. Um, there's a beautiful snap to them. This is how I paint more of my uh, paintings that I need a little bit more control with. Now, I decided to design the second set based on painting more loosely. I'm doing more abstract landscapes. I'm working on portraiture that is more free flowing. Um, and so I kept reaching for brushes that were in, you know, another section of the studio and getting a little bit frustrated when I couldn't find what I needed. So I'm going to show you how to use each and every brush in this new set. So when you first get your set, I'm going to grab mine that I've been playing with. You're going to notice the set is very different. It is a synthetic squirrel. These hairs are very thirsty, so they're going to pick up a ton of water and um, you're gonna be able to, again, create some beautiful expressive florals and landscapes, whatever it is that you're working on um, that requires more water, more flow, and to allow your watercolor painting to be more loose and open. And I'll show you what I mean by that, but let me demonstrate each brush. So I'm gonna start with this first one, which is our mop brush. Now, when you first get them, you'll notice that they're stiff because they have a coating to protect the shape. 
I just like to um, wash them. You can do it under the tap just with some warm water, but also in your water jar should be fine. Now these brushes will be thirsty. You'll need to use a lot of water to get them going. You can see how much water is in this mop brush here. Let's use this yellow ochre that I have on my palette. So I'm just waking up some old paint. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting lots of that pigment into my water mix. Because I have a lot of water on my brush um, and I mixed a lot of water in this puddle, you can see how much water I need. Um, it's going to be very transparent and that's okay because we're just demonstrating how to use the brush. Now, again, you can use the brush different ways, very loose strokes and I have just a big sheet of watercolor here. Make sure you can see me, I'm in frame. Really light, fine strokes lays down a lot of water but if you lay down on that barrel look at that beautiful wash of color and even if you're laying down backgrounds this will be the brush that you pick up so you can create some beautiful nice washes of color and I still have you can see how wet the brush is hopefully I still have a lot of water on this brush so I can continue to paint some again if you're working on florals I'll show you that to paint some nice, beautiful, thick strokes there. So I'm seeing the beginning of a flower here. So again, if you're struggling with your loose florals, then it, you know, change your tools. So maybe it's your brush that you um, need to change. And again, I designed these brushes with loose florals, loose abstracts, loose um, landscapes in mind. So again, this will be your big brush that you can start um, your backgrounds with and even use for a lot of water. See, I haven't even loaded my brush again. And look how much water there is still on it, okay? So that is your mop brush. Maybe we'll even do a quick uh, landscape or a floral. So I like to make sure that I just form it a little bit lay it flat so that it can dry okay so that is our mop brush now the filbert so this brush will allow you to create some really nice um what color should we use let's use this burnt sienna some really nice petal shapes um, again if you're working on landscapes that would be really great for your hillsides but again use your brush in different ways so you can use your brush to create some really nice thin strokes or lay it flat and let the tip of the brush connect with the paper and i'm not using um, a super great quality watercolor paper here i wanted a big sheet this is um i believe it is pulp i don't think it's cotton but again i have some practice paper that i use for when i'm testing or sketching um, but you can hold the brush to the side to make some really nice points or you can hold the brush on the flat side to create some nice petal shapes, or you can even hold it on the side to create some even nicer shapes. So your, and because they don't have the snap, so you can see how the shape has maintained itself, you're going to be able to create just some loose, and again, I'm just going intuitively just playing here. You're gonna be able to create some really nice loose shapes that will take you very little effort. Um, so they aren't meant to snap, they're meant to move and flow. And you are, I recommend using um, more water than not in them, okay? So the, the more saturated your brush is, so whether it's with your watercolor paint or water, the more, um, flow you'll have in the brush stroke okay so again just going to wash it off here and I like to reshape it and um, lay it flat to dry okay so now we have the dagger brush so this one is very loose I decided to go with a longer hair um, because I want you to create let's use this oh that's not pigmented enough we'll use this blue here I think I added too much water when I was reconstituting this palette so for this brush, I want you to think of in your painting leaves. So if I go in with really light pressure, we can even see there, um, it can create a nice straight line. But then if I just pull down, give it a little wiggle, 
Look at that beautiful shape it creates naturally. So I'm holding it close to the top or the top edge of the brush because I want it to be loose. Ooh, even that little was really nice. I want it to be loose and I want the brush and its characteristics to really um, come through. So that's holding it sort of top to bottom. But if I wanted to put it on its side, give myself a bit of space here. Let's go up here actually. I can create these really nice, if I wanted even leaves that um, were thicker, I can create these really nice shapes here. And again, even load up your brush with different colors. So again, really loading it up. So that um, synthetic squirrel, it has a little bit of a curl to each individual um, brush hair so it picks up a ton of water and it responds really well when you have lots of water look at that beautiful leaf so even if we were to create you know a leaf shape here and I, I want you to explore and experiment with what shapes you can create um, with these brushes don't feel uh, restricted really allow yourself to Think about, you know, how does the brush behave and how can I use it to um, to its benefits, really? Okay, so last one up is the rigor brush. Now, it is very similar to, you know, wanting to use your tiniest detail brush to create some thin, thin lines. The rigor brush, I think, was initially designed to paint... Um, the rigors of the uh, sailboats, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know for sure. Um, but I think that's the history of why it's called a rigor brush because you get, let me go up here actually, you can get some really nice thin fine lines and you don't have to keep reloading the brush. Again, the way it's designed, ooh, that even looks like a tree trunk to me. The way that I design these brushes is so that they hold lots of water Look, I haven't even reloaded. If I were to do this with my detail brush, there's no way that I would get all these lines. Look how fun that is. That just kind of feels like an abstracted tree trunk to me. I'm Like I'm still going, but look at how nice and fine those lines are. So when you are thinking about trees, let me give myself a little bit more room here. When you're thinking about trees, let's go ahead and paint the trunk I don't have brown on my palette, but let's say this is the trunk of the tree. I'm just going to paint something to have down. And then this is our branch going upwards. It's a little bit thick, but that's okay. And then let's say you want your wispy um, branches to come out. Well, all you have to do is use your rigor brush to do that. And because I'm holding it again, sort of at the very top of the, the handle, I can create some really fine wispy lines. So if you're working on landscapes and you have some trees or you're working on even ocean waves and you want a little bit of flow, hold the brush at the side and it creates a little bit of a thicker wave. But then if I hold it just at the very tip, Look at those lines I can create. Okay, so play around with these new brushes. They're going to offer you so much more freedom when it comes to painting expressively and um, allow you to create those beautiful, free-flowing, I think less contrived and more um, organic shapes and lines in your watercolor painting okay so let me know if that was helpful and um, keep me posted on how you are doing with painting with these new brushes and thank you for supporting me by purchasing a set if you um, didn't weren't able to get a set during our first round then let us know because we can put, place another order okay so i hope you enjoyed that let me know what you think and happy playing